Good evening, guys. Welcome to Beyond Codependency and Trauma's training today, Tuesday's training. Today, we're going to talk a bit about how trauma shapes our mindset because the impact of trauma absolutely impacts the way we think, the way we perceive, and the way we respond and react to reality. And I call this technically, I call this the cage. And the CAGE stands for, it's an acronym, it stands for four specific things that happen in our brain when we've been under trauma for a long time, or we've experienced a continual lack of nurture, connection, respect, and love. The first one that shows up for us is an habituation. Hi, David. How are you feeling? Um, habituation for conclusionism, okay? So the CAGE, the whole idea behind the CAGE is to structure the way we think, to structure the way we feel so we can control outcomes so that we can feel safe. It's the attempt to manufacture safety and control in our lives. That's a trick to do, and that starts with conclusions. If the brain knows what's gonna happen, then it can plan around it. Now, this is, this is an interesting problem for us because as survivors of trauma, as survivors of neglect, codependency, our brain's predictive brilliance has been put to use for other people. It's also kept us alive, but it's been a challenge for us, right? Because what it does is it goes out and says, well, this will happen. And conclusions are always based on what's happened in the past. They're not really based on what true possibility is for us. And so what happens with conclusions is we end up creating self-fulfilling prophecies, so this first component of your cage, it can be very challenging to face. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to break through this cage in tomorrow's video, but today I just want you to start identifying where you're coming from in this. So first you have your conclusions. What conclusions are you living in about your future? That's the question you wanna ask yourself. What are you predicting is going to happen, right? And that can include positive predictions. That's important right there. Number two is assumptions. We assume that something is a way. We assume that something will be a certain way. We assume a person is this way, or they feel this way, or they think that way, or we're this way, or we're that way. Assumptions get us in trouble because if we treat them as facts, they will lead into conclusions, and they'll lead into actions that tend to create that self-fulfilling prophecy. So what assumptions are you making about yourself, about other people, about your future, and about your present right now that are limiting you. And that can include positive assumptions too. Like, I'm an awesome person. That's a good positive assumption, but what if there was more to that? So tomorrow we'll talk about how to deal with assumptions as well. The next category that tends to show up in our thinking, especially because we've been through trauma, which means we've been through a series of what's called black and white experiences, very extreme experiences. So it's all good, it's all bad. It's all this or it's all that, okay? Black and white, all or nothing thinking comes from this. And that can get us in real trouble. Hi, Benny. And um, what we wanna do with this is with judgments, we wanna stop assuming we know the character. We know the quality of the thing. We want to stop making things right or wrong. We want to stop making things bad or good. So the question you want to ask yourself here is, what am I judging as right or wrong, bad or good? Should exist or shouldn't exist, right? Should be a certain way, should not be a different way. Because when we start identifying our judgments about people, places, or things, we start to see how we're limiting and controlling what we do and what we allow other people to be. We, especially if we're coming from codependency, we expend an enormous amount of energy around this experience. And so if we can reclaim that energy, and we'll talk about how to do that tomorrow, we can revitalize our experience of life and get re-engaged with it. And the fourth and final thing that I want you to think about in our training today, because it's apparently going very quickly, right? is expectations, okay? So CAGE is an acronym for conclusions, assumptions, judgments, and expectations. Expectations are interesting because we all have them. We have them about ourselves, we have them about other people, 
We have them about our future, about the past. We have them about what people should be and should not be in our lives. They dictate a lot of our relationship experiences and they limit us in being able to receive relationships and to contribute ourselves to them. So what expectations do you have of yourself and others and life? Those are the three categories I want you to look at. Now, a little twist here with expectation, because most people are like, but expectations are good, right? You got expectations. We're supposed to have expectations, Marshall. If I don't have expectations, then how do I know what I want? Won't I be taken advantage of if I don't have expectations? Won't I settle for something? No. What you've done, and this is extremely common, is we confuse standards with expectations. Expectations are silent demands that somebody or something else be a certain way that it is not. Okay? It's like me expecting you to really love and like me. But in reality, you're like, you got to gain my trust, Marshall. See? A little different there. Desire in expectation is important because expectations are basically a desire that hasn't been asked for. That's the way I look at them. So they're really a powerful vehicle to wake us up to what we really want. So if I have an expectation that somebody treat me a certain way, then I can ask them to. And then that's the way we gain consent and connection in our relationships that allows us to thrive, allows us to have that warm, consistent kindness that shows up in our lives. That's what we want to be attentive to. But first and foremost, what I'd like you to do now is start identifying the expectations you have of yourself, others, and life. That way you can start seeing what your real desires are. And then tomorrow, we'll talk about what to do with these four categories so that it starts working for you, so you can break free of that cage. Now, I wanna reinforce, again, the value of the cage. It's not wrong to be in the cage. The cage is important. The cage has protected us. It helped us navigate the abusive cycle. It helped us survive the neglect we were going through. It helped us get through the trauma because we had to predict, we had to create conclusions, we had to make assumptions, we had to make judgments in order to make the world a safe place. But now that we're exiting that, we're moving beyond it, we need to connect back with a larger, more effective mindset or perspective, and that's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow, the power of curiosity, okay? So thank you guys for showing up. I know it's short. I'm typically short on these things. Apparently, it's supposed to be longer, right? Um, but that's what I want you to think about because your trauma has taught you to think in a very narrow and specific way. Codependency has taught you to think in a very a rigid black and white manner and to really connect back to our happiness back to who we are to really actually discover if Marshall's full of crap or not when he claims that we can be brilliant we can be happy we can have our power back we need to start reshaping the way we perceive the world by managing our cage and that's my goal for you today in this is to start waking up to that and go ooh. I got a conclusion here and an assumption there and a judgment about that and an expectation here. Once you know what they are, then tomorrow, join me at the same time, 5 p.m., and we will knock that out, okay? Now, we're in the last week before Get Closure Now closes. We have three seats left. I have two people looking at those seats, so we may just have one seat left here very quickly. If you want closure on your trauma, you want freedom, from the paralyzation in your mind, the panic that haunts you in the background, the, the pain in your body, the limits, the rigidity, the, the anxiety, the nightmares. We can start getting you closure with trauma, and that's, I'm going to teach you how to do that. Specifically, I'm going to teach you three things and get closure now. One, I'm going to teach you how to regulate your nervous system so that you have control over your body again. You don't feel controlled by the panic or the anxiety. Instead, you're able to regulate your feelings, your sensations, your body, and your thoughts in such a way that you feel at peace and safe being present back in your body. Two, I'm going to teach you the closure technique. I'm going to teach you how it works, and I'm going to lead you through it in a one-on-one session, private one-on-one session with you and me. 
we knock out a trauma of your choosing. And three, I'm going to teach you the power of mind state and embodiment so that you can discover who you are beyond your trauma so that your life continues to expand for you. Right? And that's what we're going to accomplish in this six-week training that starts this coming Monday, June 3rd, 7 p.m. So if this resonates with you, I urge you to click on the link above, go to closure.freethself.com and apply for your spot. We'll have a short consult. The consult is for me to evaluate whether or not this is appropriate for you right now, if there's a better solution out there, either that I could provide or another individual could, because I take this very seriously. I want you to succeed in your happiness and getting your life back. That's what the consult does, give you some tips. And then we'll sign you up if this is the appropriate thing for you, if you feel like it's gonna work for you too, okay? So I appreciate you guys being here and remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And I will see you tomorrow for the second half of this training on how to deal with the cage. You guys have a good night. Talk to you soon.